Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble uh, And we will be going until uh, midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight, uh, Eastern Time It's not daylight anymore, jeez, how my, how, how times change Anyway, uh, it's time for us to talk to an old friend, okay? Okay Ladies and gentlemen from out California way I guess that's the way we'd put it. It's the musical stylings of Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> yes. The very tired sty- stylings with this, uh, I cannot take the time change. Now, uh, uh, first of all, before we get to the time change, we're recording this a day before the big elections. Uh, because election night, I want to just do election stuff. So we're running the interview on a Wednesday. Okay. Mm. So the election, according to people who are listening to this has already taken place. So how about the fact that the Democrats just routed the Republicans? <laughs> we saw that coming. We saw that coming, boy. That Trump's got his bad. That blue wave just rolled in there. Now let's try take two. Um, gee, yesterday was terrible, wasn't it, uh, Bubbles? It was just Yeah, horrible. I guess the Republicans really got energized by that Kavanaugh debacle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too bad that we Democrats just uh, were trounced last night. It was horrible. Okay, so then I can edit this to make either one work, I guess. Right. <laughs> anyway, hello, Bubbles. Uh, this time change is killing me. It, uh, it, it does kill you. It, 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 most people go through a certain kind of uh, jet lag. Yeah, I feel like I've been drugged. Yeah, yeah, it's a jet lag that you feel, and it's uh, terrible. It's just terrible. Um, in fact, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get through 25 minutes of this. I'm drinking coffee. Uh, I'm on new medicine, which makes me drowsy anyway, so. Mm. Mm. Well, I think it's... Uh... But I, sl- I sleep like a baby. Well, well there's... What, two, I'm, st- two states that don't change the clocks. I'm, think, I'm thinking about actually moving there. To- Arizona doesn't, for. right? Arizona, Hawaii, and parts of Indiana. Parts of Indiana. That was- Not the whole state, <laughs> parts. Well, that's a fucked up idea. I mean, you know, just parts of the state? Yeah, I, mean, I can't. Uh, this is, what, something that farmers needed in the 1700s? It's unbelievable that we keep doing this Well, crap. no, we only started doing this in, like, I think the 50s, maybe? Maybe a little earlier than that? For the, But it's for the farmers, yeah. Yeah, and I ain't no fucking farmer. I know. You know, and, and it's we're just fooling ourselves into, into making ourselves believe, oh, hey, look how late the sun is up. Well, that's because you turned the clocks forward, asshole. Yeah. You know, you've just fooled yourself. Why don't they just say to everybody, hey, you know what we'll do during the summer? We'll let you off from work an hour early. Uh-huh. Or something like that. Or winter, start, start work at school an hour later if it's too dark, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but this whole this whole concept, really, it's it's stupid. And, and it really is. It, uh, are we the only country that does it, or do other co- country other countries do it? Don't they? I think Europe does it too. Really? Yeah. Day- mm. Daylight saving time. Do we save daylight, or do- is that? <laughs> I don't know. Like you said, there's a there's a certain amount of daylight in each day. So, gee, this daylight saving time is good. Look how late the sun goes down. Well, it would go down late anyway. You know, the sun's not going to change for you, okay? Right. So you just decided to do something to fuck your clocks over, you know. I don't change mine, but so I try to stay in the old schedule, but it, you still well, feel screwed Well, up. I've got my Apple Watch with Mickey Mouse. Uh, and, uh, folks, this is this is pre-recorded, by the way, when I do this. Uh, it's one or five. 
Good afternoon. <laughs> so that's my Mickey Mouse watch or my Apple watch. So, But you wouldn't know about that because you don't know about technology. No, I've got people offering to give me Apple phones. and. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got, I've got one sitting here for you. But, you know, if you don't start doing something about it, I'm going to have to give it away. Yeah, you know, I don't like <laughs> Apple products to begin with. I don't like that company. I don't know. Yeah. So what are you going to get? Some kind of watch that sucks, or some someone's kind of phone get, someone's going to get someone, get the jitterbug. Let's say a smartphone <laughs> for old people. <laughs> the jitterbug. Yeah, it's got like big. I think a big big numbers on it. Icons and, and numbers and everything. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, the jitterbug. Well, I think that's about your speed to tell you the goddamn truth. I know. You know, I uh, just can't. If I'm not interested in something, I really can't learn it. I become like uh, mentally retarded. And, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, it, and other people besides me have offered you phones, right? Yeah. Oh, several. Yeah. 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 See, so uh, uh, and the reason is they buy the newest one, and they have that other one sitting around the house, and there's no reason to throw it out. So let's give it to Larry. So I imagine you sitting there at your house with like 20 smartphones <laughs> sit just sitting there not doing anything just sitting there you know. just winking at me yeah so but uh uh, uh what is what is your what, what you just fight it and you don't consciously fight it you just don't do anything about it right so what's the reason behind that? Do you can be figured just out? Very, I, ne I don't do well with change. I just never have, if anything. So. Well, but this is not, think of it not as change, but as progress. The fact that you're the only guy I know with a, uh, a cell phone that's a dial-up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a flip. I don't think it's a dial-up. <laughs> It has a rotary thing on it that was the original iPhone, you know. Uh, I did it. The flip phone, actually, I've learned to text, which I kind of like that. You've learned to text, but you know how you've got a text on the, on the flip phone, don't you? Yeah, it takes uh, five minutes to punch in hello because you've got to hit the numbers three times. <laughs> it, 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 to get to the, to get to the yeah. letter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shame on you. I know. Shame well, you got to get out here and show me how to do this crap. It, well, I mean, it's it's it, it. Do you know something? It for text, it's simpler than what you've got. You just simply text and you type in a letter, and that letter you can say what you want to do into the phone. That's what. I, yeah, that would be nice. Just talking into the phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then it will write it. You know. Although I, I can't imagine there's must make a lot of mistakes with voice recognition. Not really. Not if you're good at it. What I mean by good at it is that once you start, you know, you know the words you're going to say and you just say it, you know. And then you go, uh, hello, Larry, how are you doing today? Period. I'm doing fine, exclamation mark. You know, and it comes out pretty good. The, the, I remember when voice recognition first happened, and it was just ridiculously bad, you know. But now it's terrific. Get with it, Larry! Well, you were always on the cutting edge of this stuff. I remember you had one of the first, I think you had the first cell phone I ever saw. Yeah, yeah. I was always into technology. Yeah. You had the brick. It, it, no, I didn't have a brick. I actually had a phone in the car. That was it, yeah. Uh, that was uh, that had a had a cord, and and you you know it was uh, it was one of the early ones. Then I got, then Motorola came out with the first flip phone, so I got a flip phone. And you know, one thing led to another. I'll tell you one thing about the uh, 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 about the iPhone when it first came out. I had dreams about it, literally dreams of having an iPhone. Really. <laughs> yeah, but I was waiting for it because, number one, my current plan had another, like, year to run, okay? And because I figured I'd wait a year for him to get all the kinks out of it. And so I bought it, I think, in its second year, the iPhone. And I waited in line for it. There were huge lines. And you would line up in front of the Apple store, 
and uh, um, it was it was ridiculous. I mean, they had two lines. They had one line for the people who had pre-ordered, okay, and that line was hellishly long. And then they had another line for people who hadn't pre-ordered, and it was very short. Yeah. And they say, well, we let these people in first, the ones who pre-ordered. And I checked myself against somebody else who was in the line uh, about at the end of the line where I was to see when they got in. They got in much faster than I did. So what did I do pre-ordering that piece of shit? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't like Apple as a company. I think Apple as a company is uh, one of the most evil companies alive. Uh, yeah, they and, are, and, yeah. And I know people are listening to me going, oh, I love my Apple. Well, no, but the company is evil because of all the things they do. Uh, and one of them that really bothered me was when they started these Apple stores. There had been com companies, places, that doggedly had remained Apple stores. Uh, uh, one of them was Mac Adam in San Francisco. There was another one over in Marin County. Where if you had an Apple, you went there to get your stuff. And they stayed in business through good and bad. You remember Apple almost went out of business at one point. Right. But these guys stayed open. They stayed loyal. And so did the so did the the people who were Apple acolytes. All right. All of a sudden, these guys have to close down because Apple decided to open up an Apple store a block away. And they did that. Like McAdam in San Francisco, which was the biggest Apple dealer, okay, and had been doggedly Apple for years and years and years and years and years. They built an Apple store a block away. And the next That's thing brutal. you know, McAdam is having to shutter their, their doors. Uh, there was a big uh, store down here. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. On uh, um, uh, 23rd Street that finally had to close down. And when I went in there once, I said, so uh, how, how do you do? I mean, do they give you uh, the, uh, you know, the iPhone or the Apple, the new Apple computer or whatever the same day that it comes out? I like the iPads and things like that. And they say, no, they wait about three weeks to let us have them. And I'm going, there's something really wrong with that. Yeah. You know, and, and the government never did anything about it and said, y you know, Years ago, uh, I don't. You don't remember this, and I, I don't remember it at all either. But the movie companies owned movie theaters. Okay, to this day, I do remember somebody. Uh, I think there might have been a Supreme Court decision on. There was an antitrust decision. Yeah, that they couldn't own the means of distribution if they were producing the product. Okay. And so, therefore, they couldn't have theaters. And they made them sell all the theaters. Uh, they could do the distributing. I think they could still have a distribution company. But they, they couldn't own theaters anymore because what they were doing is if they had a big hit movie, uh, MGM, which was Lowe's, would put, them, put, say, Gone with the Wind in all the Lowe's theaters but not let any of the other theaters, especially the independents, have it for a long, mm -hmm. long time. And so the, I don't think, I know if it was the Supreme Court, but I do know it was the Justice Department who filed a legal action against them and made them divest themselves of the theaters. Um, and um, so that, that, was a, that was a big decision. Well, if that's the case, wouldn't that be true with Apple, the producer of products, owning the stores that they're sold in? Exactly, yeah. So I think they should shutter all those damn fucking Apple stores, you know. And I don't know where all those geniuses will go. I suppose they're going to go somewhere to split the atom. You know? <laughs> no, that's a good point, though. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, it, there's no difference. And so I, I said to myself, why are, they, why are they allowing this to go on? Um, and it, 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 that's one thing I hate about Apple. Uh, what I hate about Apple is that every year they make you obsolete. You know, you may remember years ago, cars got obsolete supposedly after a year, but they really didn't. Most cars actually radically change their models only once every three years. 
in the intervening years, they would come out with the new Ford, and the new Ford would have like, uh, oh, I don't know, a larger fin versus a smaller fin, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. It was a moderate uh, uh, change in look of the car, but very slight. And then at, at three years, oh, man, that was that was when you waited for them because they came out with the brand new, just new body and new everything and new stuff inside and new seats and all of that. But here, Apple just goes for total obsolescence after a year. And I say to myself, like, I just got an iPhone X a couple of months ago, and already it's obsolete because now you have the, I don't know, the uh, uh, Apple uh, ZY or something that blows you, you know? <laughs> um, and, and I don't like that. I also don't like the fact that, uh, for instance, if you have a... Um, if you have a PC and that PC is 15 years old, you can still run Windows on that PC. But Apple, after 10 years, makes like I have a machine here that's totally obsolete. I cannot upgrade to the newest operating system because it won't it won't go along. And they give some lousy excuse like, well, because it. It plays to a certain chip that we now have in the thing and blah, 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 blah. That's bullshit. They can retrofit the old ones. You know, they can make the old, they can make the OS work with the old ones, but they don't. And, and that's another thing they do. And I think that sucks. Okay. Yeah, they, maybe they should be sued. Not that the newest OS works that well. It took me two attempts on both of the machines. I upgraded to it. Uh, two or three tries before it actually worked you know i mean apple is not this this technically proficient company that it once was that's what people that like this stuff tell me and uh, i also the uh the people that like apple products almost seem like they're stepford wives or something just so <laughs> Well, you know what it is with me? There are two things. Yeah, there are those who are like, must have Apple, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a Night of the Walking uh, Dead Apple acolytes. Um, but the other reason why is that I've got an Apple phone. I've got an Apple computer. I've got an Apple watch. I've got iPads, iPhones, whatever. And... I'm in that eco structure. And now that I'm in that eco structure, it's very hard to get out of. You know? Uh, yeah, you're trapped. Yeah. But my Apple phone is, I mean, even my email address is linked to my Apple phones. It's an Apple account, which you get automatically when you get an iPhone. You know? So um, uh, I'm so linked to it that I really can't extricate myself from it. And everything, admittedly, everything talks to everything else. If you send me a, a, a text, I'll get it on my watch, I'll get it on my iPad, I'll get it on my computer, I'll get it on my, you know, iPhone uh, popping up. So uh, I'm, I'm wedded to that eco structure. And uh, I wish I wasn't. I wish that tomorrow I could go out and maybe buy a Samsung if I think it's the better phone, but I can't, you know. So I'm, and, and I have to admit, I mean, Apple is still, I think, the best phone out there. Mm -hmm. I think all, and I'm not being prejudiced about this, but I've, you know, I've had some uh, uh, of the others in in one form or another. I have a little kind of like iPad type device that's linked to the current operating system of, uh, say, Samsung. It's a Samsung tablet. And I find that it's kind of klutzy. You know, I don't find it as good. Uh, but uh, Apple, uh, you know, Apple it, uh, makes a very good product, but it's very high priced. You know, it's not cheap any longer. Um, I mean, you if you get the newest uh, iPhone, the newest, the iPhone Max, which is the biggest screen and the most everything, and blah blah blah. You're gonna you're gonna pay fourteen hundred bucks for that damn thing. Jesus. 
you know. Now it's paid off, you know, you use your, your phone bill. It's on your phone bill every month as a monthly payment, and you pay it off that way. So they figure they can charge whatever they want because people aren't going to have to pay that every month. But still, I mean, that's a pretty high price for anything. You know, so I think maybe the jitterbug's a good idea for you. Yeah, I'm going to get a jitterbug from Larry Stoll. <laughs> oh, does he have a jitterbug? I think so, yeah. Larry Stoll, this is a guy we know, folks, has, has a jitterbug? He works at Sprint, yeah. I wouldn't have a jitterbug to save my life because that's just admitting you're old. <laughs> you know, jitterbug is a way. Well, why'd you get the jitterbug? I gave up. <laughs> I gave up. <laughs> I've given up. I gave up a long time. Yeah, it has the big letters on it. <laughs> oh, man. But well, it's hard to believe. I remember when we were on radio towards the end there, the Apple, we spent one morning because Apple was on the verge of going under. Yeah. Well, they sent me, in those days, what they did is I went on the air and I was like always kind of putting down Apple and saying, why would anybody want one of these pieces of crap? And so uh, Apple called me and said, do you want to like have one on loan and see how good they are? And I said, yeah, sure, I'll do that. So I, I had them, they delivered it, and I used it, and it was the biggest piece of shit I ever, this was during their downtime without jobs when they had uh, the other guy in there. and uh, Gil Emilio. No, there was the guy before that, uh, the guy who was from Pepsi. I'm trying to remember his name uh, now. Scully? Scully. Good, you you can you, you should be my you should jo you should live with me and you could be my memory guy. I'll be the jogger, you, you <laughs> the memory, memory jogger. jogger. Yeah, so the Scully and it was under Scully and it was the worst piece of shit I ever played with in my life. Slow, it was glitchy. Uh, I opened it up once to see what was inside and they were using tin foil as a shield for some stuff. You know, really, very. Wow. There was no elegance to it at all. All right. Uh, and w whereas I got my my first uh, Mac Pro that I got, this is my second one, but I opened up my first Mac Pro and I expected to see nothing but the same thing in there. And it was gorgeous. It was just, it was all metal and it was, it was just beautiful. Okay. But anyway, so they sent me these things, piece of shit. And finally they call me up and they say, well, what do you think? And I said, I think it's a piece of shit. They said, well, anyway, it's yours. <laughs> and I said, what, what? They said, it's yours. They said, uh, you know, it's used, and uh, uh, we wanted you to try it, and uh, now that you have it, just keep it. So I kept this thing, and I never used it. It was that bad. Uh, so that was, that was what I remembered most about Apple. Until I came to New York, and I started editing video for my friend Steve, um, and... Uh, he had apples. And so I used the apple. And of course, you know, I love editing video. And I found they were great for editing video. Mm -hmm. You know, they were. And, and so consequently, I went out and bought an apple because it was good for editing video. And that's what got me into it. And then uh, they came up with uh, the new Intel chip, which allowed you to run PC programs on the Mac, and I figured, well, why don't I get a Mac because I can always run PC programs on it if I need them, which I had had for years because I was using PCs. And the next thing you know, I'm an Apple guy, okay? And I really didn't even play run the PC programs that much. So, you know, that's how I got it. That's how they got me. Wow. You know, that's how that little... You were the PC guy. Yeah, that little pancreatic creep uh, jobs got me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, 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 you know. And and I do admit that I, I like them a lot, but I also admit that I use a PC now, like I'm interviewing you now using, well, I'm recording it on a Mac, but I'm calling you uh, with Skype on a PC, and this PC is very peppy and zippy and, easy to use and so on so i i think the pcs are every bit as good as the mac and the mac may not really be as good as it used to be you know um 
But uh, they keep adding stuff, and I don't know why they keep adding stuff. I know the Microsoft Word, they keep coming up with a new Microsoft Word, and what does it do basically for me? I write a letter with it. I don't need it to send mail to Mars or something. I don't know what the, what the newest versions do. But they always add something, and it's something you'll never use. Plus, you can't buy it anymore. You have to rent it. You can't buy it? You don't buy Microsoft Office anymore. You subscribe to it at $100 a year. So, you know, that whole model has changed. Uh, but anyway, hey, you know, this is what you're missing, Larry. <laughs> this is what you're missing. I've got to hey. come back to the future. Anyway, we got to go, Larry. Okay. And we'll talk to you next week. Larry well, Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. But we sure called that election, didn't we? Yeah, we certainly <laughs> did. See you later. Bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that was our old friend Larry Bubbles Brown. Amazing. Nice talking to him. I love him. I really love him. I wish he would come here and you could see what he looks like because he looks as funny as he sounds. Okay. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Before we go to the, uh, uh, to the, the Skype lines, uh, I just want to play something. I'm going to play the audio from it because um, uh, if I show the video, I'm afraid that one of these companies, whether it's Facebook or uh, YouTube, will go, oh, that's in copyright, when it really isn't because it's of a press conference, which everybody covered today. But if you don't think our president is going fucking insane, today was proof positive of it. This is the reason you don't want him to have his finger on the bomb. This was a press conference he held today, and uh, he was there to just say how wonderful everything was and how they just routed the Democrats last night. And then he opened it up to questions. Listen to what went on. If you didn't hear this, you've got to hear this. Okay, let's see. One of the statements that you made in the tail end of the campaign uh, in, in the midterms. That here, this, here we go. That well, if you Let's don't go. mind, Mr. President, that this caravan was an invasion. As you know, yeah, I, Mr. President, I consider it to be an invasion. As you know, Mr. President, the caravan was not an invasion. It's a, it's a, a group of migrants moving up from Central America towards the border with the U.S. Thank you for telling and me that. And uh, why, why did you, why did you characterize it as such? Uh, because and, I consider it an invasion. You and I have a difference of opinion. But do you think that you demonized immigrants? In not this at election, all. No, not to at try all. I to want keep them, I want them to come into the country, but they have to come in legally. You know, they have to come in, Jim, through a process. I want it to be a process. And I want people to come in, and we need right. the people. Your you know, campaign, wait, your campaign. Wait, wait. You know why we need the people, don't you? Because we have hundreds of companies moving in. We need the people. Right. Your campaign had an ad showing migrants climbing over walls and well, so on. Well, that's true. It poured, it, but they it, weren't it, actors. They're not going to be doing they that. They weren't actors. Well, no, it's true. Do you think they were actors? They weren't actors. They didn't come from Hollywood. Right. These, were, these were people. This was an actual, you know, it happened a few days ago. And, uh, They're hundreds of miles away, though. They're hundreds and hundreds of miles away. That, that's I not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let would me be ask, much better. If I, if I okay, may ask enough. one other question. Mr. President, if I may, if I may right, ask Peter, one other ahead. question, are you worried? That's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President, me. That's enough. Mr. President, I had one other question, if I may ask, on the Russia investigation. Are you concerned that... That you may have I'm not concerned about anything with the Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. I, I think that's unfair. You're a very rude person. The way you treat Sarah Huckabee is horrible. And the way you treat other people are horrible. You shouldn't treat people that way. Go ahead. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter. Go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts. Well, I'm not a big fan of us. yours either. So I yeah, understand. To be honest. So with me, okay. Well, that's uh, that's what went on. Uh, let me uh, let me just turn this off here. Okay. So I don't have to watch him or listen to him any longer. 
that was uh, what happened in the press conference today. Have you ever heard anything like that? It's just absolutely unbelievable that any president of the United States would act in that, in that way. And calling Jim Acosta rude when what he was being was rude is amazing to me. Uh, it's really terrible what went on there. And uh, 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 kudos to, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, um, Peter Alexander of uh, MSNBC and of NBC News for defending Jim Acosta. Uh, boy, that was just, that was amazing. Just amazing. Well, let me open it. The lines are open now. I'm having troubles tonight. I, I, I'm having trouble with my stomach, to tell you the truth. Uh, so we'll, we'll, if, you, if you come on here, I may have to run off to the bathroom or do something like that. But uh, anyway, I am, I am not in good shape. All right. So let's get some calls here. And if we don't get any calls, I can call the call show short, and then I can go to the bathroom. Uh, in any event, uh, what I want to do um, uh, uh, is take your calls if uh, you want to call tonight. I have a feeling we might not have a lot of callers tonight, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, well, wait a minute. Here's Scott Boddicker already. Oh, ah, yeah. Well, hello, Scott. How are you, my friend? Yes, turn on the lights. Ah, there I we go. I got the light on, I guess. I looked yeah. at myself. Jeez, I'm in the dark. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. Boy, you had quite an election going for you last night down there in uh, oh, Texas. Oh. I, I was so sleepy last night. I said, well, I got to step and watch Al and listen to Alex. And But I lay down at 7.30. I woke up at 11.30. I so, swear. And, so and uh, you, I woke up during Jack's show, and I said, oh, it's too late to call him. You, mi you missed the action last I night. I missed it all. Yeah. Missed yeah. All. You missed uh, some really great action last night. Well, I mean, in hey, your, we got in the your, house, that's well, all I can say. We got the well, house. you know, I, 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 even though a lot, even though a lot of Democrats are depressed that uh, Beto uh, Rodriguez, what's his name, Beto uh, uh, O'Rourke, O'Rourke uh, didn't win. Uh, for him to come that close in Texas, yeah. is pretty goddamn amazing. I mean, the amount of difference between the two votes was not that that phenomenal. Like two hundred thousand, maybe or something. It was, it was a, you know, yeah. it's about the population of Plano, right? Yeah. L less than the population. Of Plano. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you can stand to listen, live around those morons, but you know, uh, what the hell, you know? Uh, you drink a lot. You yeah. drink a lot. Yeah, but uh, in retrospect, hello, Rob, and hello, uh, 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 Tom. Um, uh, yeah. uh, you may have to talk among yourselves in a couple of minutes or so because my stomach has just been roiling today. Anyway, um, what did you think of last night, Tom? Oh, it was very exciting. Of course, yesterday I worked at the polls, as I usually do, and uh, it was a lot of, lot of people. Um, I got interviewed by uh, Channel 5. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people dropping off mail-in ballots. And uh, and I was pretty happy with the results. I really had a few couple of disappointments for me, but otherwise generally dropping with Dropping mail-in ballots? I mean, if it's a yeah. mail-in ballot, why didn't they mail it in? Save a stamp. <laughs> oh. <laughs> plus, plus, yeah, but it cost them gas. Plus, so thick. I mean, they're so thick, you need a couple stamps. But oh, really? You could drop them off at any polling place on the election day, and that's what a lot of people do. They go off to work, they just drop it off right there, and uh, it was just the, 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 the box was just full. It was just amazing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's terrific. Well, uh, yeah, the. Um, uh, but here's something strange about California, and I don't know, I, you know, I was watching the news today, and they were listing, you know, who won what, and they had like the two races and how much one person got and another person got, and they were going on a constant crawl. Up comes Diane Feinstein, and she's, of course, blue because she's a Democrat. And, the guy, she, and the guy she's running against is blue. Mm -hmm. He's a Democrat, too. And then I suddenly remember California has this new way of doing things that in the primary they take the top two people. Right. And have them run against each other, and in this case, it was two Democrats. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, a number of races. It's been two de two Democrats, and uh, it's been this like uh, this for a number of years ever since they started. Like last time that uh, um, 
uh, Kamala Harris ran, um, her opponent was a Democrat as well. So yeah. it's it has the top two primary, and uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Scott. Hey, I, I want to know, when it's two Democrats running against each other, do they get really nasty and, and, and dirty against each other? It depends on the race. Okay. Uh, we had a assembly race here mm -hmm. in uh, in the East Bay that really got really, really nasty. And yeah, and, and it can happen because <laughs> basically if, if, if two candidates are pretty much on the same page on, on issues, all they've got against running against each other is the personalities. And as you say, it can happen. I think the, the Feinstein, uh, Kevin de Leon uh, race went rather, was, was sort of rather civil though. Yeah. I thought that worked out well. Yeah, I I um uh, I was very happy to see Gavin Newsom win. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I think that he's, you know, it, it's good because then he's in the running for president. Uh, That's and, true. And he'd be a stealth candidate. He, there are certain guys I I called it last time I called somebody a stealth candidate. It was Obama, because he was good looking, you know, uh, good speaker. Uh, and and uh, Newsom has all those qualities. So, everything everything Trump has. Oh yes, yeah. pure charm. Uh, you said that with, you barely said that with a straight face too. Yeah, yeah, pure. Or charm. Or Rob did I meant. Yeah, I I I, I noted Brian in a sense of uh, of what you said that you're not exactly a fan of Diane Feinstein. Oh no, I'm not. Why? But, why? You know, why? Better than why? Um, because I, I was. Uh, from, from what I gathered, I was more of a fan of the pro, of the progressive candidate that ran up against both her and Kevin DeLeon and the Republican who lost the first round. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you got to get the most votes, and, and uh, but that's a I really know. that's a strange state of affairs to be running against a, your I own. I like cop. that method, though. I wish, of course, it'll be a, probably be a cold day in hell before we have that well, here in the good old you, Commonwealth. You, you'd but. like it until you found out that in many markets around the uh, around the United States, you have two Republicans running against each other, and then well, it, then Democrats the whole got to step up their game. Then the whole game changes. Well, the, you know. the, speaking of game, the Democrats have to step up their game then. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, uh, yeah. yeah. In the meantime, let's just make trouble. Uh, That's uh, what I'm good at. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was your takeaway after a day of, of thinking about it, Rob, from what you heard last night, you know, and the result? I, I was very happy with the result as far as the House went. But today, when he fired Sessions, I realize he's doing that out of complete desperation to try to ha make something happen before January. Well, he's and trying then, to head off uh, Mueller. Yeah, well, I, I would know, say if, which is if I, I would which be, is concerning. I would w be willing to make you a bet that any day now Mueller will level his charges. He might. He be might. Because he might I, have to. I think. I think to begin with, I think he was waiting till after the midterms. He didn't want to interrupt the election with mm -hmm. anything like that. Okay. Um, I can respect that. Yeah. And I think you, know, you can expect maybe as much as, as soon as maybe the next week, Mueller coming down with what he finds is his final opinion on the whole thing. Well, now they're saying that if, if you know, with his, his shill, who's, who's uh, the acting, uh, the acting uh, AG, that, that he, could, he could decide not to give that report to anybody. Right. Oh, boy. Well, but, but if, if Trump does that, the hue and cry, even from his own party, would be amazing. Well, we'll see. <laughs> hue and cry even from his own party? Did you really say that? No, I'm going to say that. I think that the Republicans will only go so far with Donald Trump. There's a, there's a limit. And that so far, limit, we haven't reached that limit. Well, that, that's what I was expecting. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> well, you know, what's uh, his name? I'm uh, with those two. I saw a clip of Lindsey Graham. I think it was Lindsey Graham uh, saying uh, in an interview, they said, well, what if he tries to get rid of Sessions? He said, well, he can't do that. There would be hell to pay. Right. So well, we'll, yeah, we'll see what, what Lindsey, the where, cheerleader of Sessions, has to say where, now. Where's the hell being Probably paid nothing. right now? You know. Right. Well, he wants the job. Hmm? Yeah. Lindsay wants the job. He'd be happy. Yeah. What Scott I, said. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 
But, you know, it, it, it's really uh, a sad state of affairs. And then, I, and I just played it a few minutes ago, that press conference today. I got to watch that. Showed me. Good. Showed me that this man is not in control of his faculties. They said he was red faced and orange faced. And he turned around and he started to walk away. (laughs) Now, now if you listen to what Patrick said last night, we're just whining about the fact that he's president. Yeah. That I don't get. I don't agree with Patrick at all. Uh, Yeah. No. We'll see. No. But I mean, I, I looked at him today and I said, this guy has his finger on the bomb. You know, this is a man of such impulse that he can't control his impulses. Uh, and it, it's not it's not good. You know, and what we saw today was uh, was the worst thing I've ever seen a president of the United States do in public. Uh, yes, Brian. Yeah, what uh, what got to me a little bit, what kind of sent a chill down my spine was the uh, response he made on Twitter. Uh, concerning, uh, you want to investigate the Senate? You yeah. want to investigate the administration? Well, two can play at this game because I'll have the, the Senate investigate your asses. Yep. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But that told me, as I told a Facebook friend of mine, you know, instead of lock him up, lock him up because he's a he's he's a fanboy Democrat himself. You, the Democrat should be saying, "Watch your ass, watch your ass." Well, the- on account of the fact that you can never never underestimate how vindictive and how willing to scapegoat and deflect he he is because uh, when Obama's economic boom from his from the prior administration runs it cor- runs its course and it will mm-hmm. and these tariffs and all this other shit that uh, and the, yeah the uh, the rhetoric and the sanctions internationally speaking that Trump has placed when they start hitting us in the face and in the nuts collected metaphorically speaking um, don't be surprised for a minute if he blames all of this on the democratically controlled Congress. Well, I mean, he's going to blame everything he can on the democratic, democratically controlled Congress. He, he, this is his, you know, th- that's a no-brainer that he's going to do that. You know, that's been his we modus operandi all the economy was going to that the economy is eventually going to take a downturn with all these tariffs and shit. And this provides him the perfect scapegoat. Don't well, think for I, a minute it won't. I, you know, I and don't think for a minute that the American people are stupid enough to not fall for it either. The stock market today took a very big upturn of about 525 points. OK, and it will do a downturn. Well, about no, two no, days no. Or so, well, so. wait a minute. The question is why it went up. And I think well, why it went up was a reaction to the vote last night, at least with the Congress being against Trump, that, that uh, there was a little more confidence in this country. It, the confidence isn't being built by him. And to say that he's responsible for this economy, he hasn't done that much to make it change. Uh, the whole thing started under Obama, and it was just, it's just kept going, you know. Well, we've got two years to wait and see. Yeah. In terms of well, listen, uh, how I've, his shit affects us he, He's speaking. already announced that he's running for president. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he uh, used uh, this occasion. He's already raising money for it. Supposedly Ray has raised $200 million. Right. More or than any million other dollars. sitting president has ever done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, he doesn't seem. It, uh, do, uh, do any of you get the feeling he's not really being president? Yeah. That, of course not. You know, that we knew that from day one. He's out on the road campaigning. When he's Call not it. campaigning, he's watching Fox News. Yeah. You know. He's not doing anything. He's an accurate metaphorical representation of the collective ignorance of the American public. Well, you may be right. I know I'm right. Yeah. Especially around here in my neck of the woods. Yeah. Well, he, 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 yeah, he could very easily be the manifestation of the idiocy of the American public. You know? Uh, and it's a shame because there are a lot of smart Americans who are, are having to suffer for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I That's mean, how it works. The, 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 you know, there was a, you know, there's always been this notion that the great thing about America is that because we have free and open elections, that uh, uh, we we're, we're in better shape for that. And I'm just wondering, is the American public smart enough to vote? Free and open <laughs> elections, only if you can afford them, only if you can afford the run and you make the right inroads and connections. 
no, 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 we're not talking about that. I'm talking about just the fact that we have a democracy in which we are allowed to vote or at least have the illusion of being able to vote and change. Things. Well, we have more or less a republic with strong democratic traditions, at least according to the CIA.gov website. Yeah. But anyway, I... Uh, that bothers I, me when people on the left and the right say, and righty say it too, oh, we live in a democracy. We shouldn't do anything to detrimentally affect our democracy. Back to, but no, you've got other people on the right who, when you say that, they say, they don't <coughs> live in a republic, and they're right. And you got to... Back 30... A Republican back, democracy. No, back, I, I speak. back... We have both. Can I talk? Uh, 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 back... Uh, uh, about 30 years ago, maybe more than that, maybe 35, I was on television here in New York, and I came up with a term that I've been using all along, and that is we live in an illusionary democracy. In other that words, we're made to believe this is a democracy, but it's not exactly, you know? And that if it were, uh, I just feel a lot more freer than I do. Semantic-wise, Semantic-wise, you'd be wrong, but philosophically, I, I heard you say this on your serious program, that we live in an illusionary democracy to Christina, and I remember nodding my head in agreement, because yeah. philosophically speaking, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. We think we're free, but try not paying your property tax one, one year, try not paying your vehicle registration fee one year, try finding a job without your Social Security card, and see what happens. Well, you know, I don't, I, 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 I feel that, uh, yeah, it's a democracy, but there also has to be, there have to be uh, uh, methods. Uh, and you have a Social Security card so you can have an account so that Social Security money can build up. That's why you have that a Social Security for, card. for a retirement assistance. That wasn't meant to get a job here and there and everywhere, to be used to monitor you, track uh, you, and put a file on your ass all the time. Uh, yes, Tom. Wait, what's that noise? Is that you, Jeff? Is that uh, no? No. Okay. All right. I'll look and see who's 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 uh, picture lights up when that noise happens. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Tom. Anyway, I would just uh, say. Uh, now I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah. Uh, so so a lot of the problems that that you know at that last election indicated is the fact that. Regardless of of how big or small a population of a state is, every state has two senators, mm -hmm. and so 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 Democrats have to actually way 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 outperform Republicans to get a you know to 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 get anywhere near a majority, and we just keep falling short, and it's and that's the same problem with electoral college. So the the thing that that we have a flawed democracy mm -hmm. and. Things that worked in the that that sort of try to keep things in balance in the past regarding uh, the number of st senators that have stayed and the electoral college vote, those things those are the parts that are breaking down and people are getting really frustrated that a large part of the country is really controlling the government even though they they they, they represent the a, a far fewer uh, percentage of, of voters. Yes, Brian. Just going to say, uh, in response to, is it Yamaguchi, right? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Yamaguchi was the, uh, in order to... Uh, you can call him Tom. Tom, I, I, I like being formal sometimes. It's just... All right. All right, Brian. Whatever. Especially uh, when you can't remember, remember what Tom was name. saying. To get those, uh, to woo those voters who, who live in those uh, halved Senate districts, you're right. They're going to have to up their game a little, and that means, and I by that I mean a lot, and that might, and then you're going to need to embrace things like uh, uh, universal health care, election reform, like public financing of elections to cut down on corruption. I would add on a personal note, embracing the notion of term limits. I mean, I just pulled up a map on Google, indicating what it would have been like in 2016 if not voting for any candidate and staying home was actually a candidate and actually breaks down the electoral results. And from what I understand, Hillary Clinton would have gotten 51 electoral uh, wins over Donald Trump 16, whereas everyone else who didn't vote would have made up 471 well, you're electoral beating votes the, in the Electoral you, College. You bring, you're beating that Electoral College thing again, uh, and you don't have to. I mean, uh, we understand that there's a problem with that, you know? 
Well, even without the Electoral College, if everything else remained the same, politics speaking wise, uh, infrastructure wise, you still would have had over 100 million non participants. You got to woo those 100 million non participants. Well, we should do, we, we or should at least 80% of we them. We should do what they do in, in Australia. If you don't vote, you get fined. That's one solution we put we postulated because I posted this in public menus for people to comment on, and that was one suggestion. I agreed with it. Like uh, uh, yes, Tom. yes, Tom. Tom's got his hand up. Good, good, good. You don't need to do that. There are people that want to vote and they can't yeah. vote, uh, which is actually one of the, the bright spots of yesterday's election in Florida. Florida was the fact that people who had felonies are being returned their right to vote. There's what was that? Amendment well, you, what, I, what, I thought, what, what I thought was very interesting, Tom, is that means that the voting rights are not going to be restored to close to a million and a half people in Florida. Well, that really speaks well for the population of Florida, doesn't it? Oh, shit. That they're all ex-felons. Well, I mean, there, there's a reason why it, it, it gets back to, to, the, to, to racism itself. I mean, people uh, have been targeted and are more likely to be uh, convicted of felonies if, if they're a racial minority, oh, especially sure. low sure. income. So it's been a, it's a tactic of, of, of excluding people and, and uh, suppressing their votes. It's, it's, it's yeah. very systematic. By the way, uh, let me talk about a, a, an issue in California. Yesterday, you had an issue. I thought it was to do away with daylight savings time, but the the law was to maintain it all year long. Well, and people voted for it. What kind of idiots? I would vote to do away with it, but not to do it all year long. Here, here's 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 the issue, Alex. Um, Either way, uh, what happened was, and you were talking to Larry uh, about this, it was actually uh, an initiative in 1949 where, uh, where the, the voters had, uh, had uh, you know, set up the, the, the system of daylight saving time. Yeah. And, uh, and basically, the only way that's, that it could be really changed is being putting on the ballot. So... This ballot initiative actually basically tells the legislature that they can go to either either all daylight saving time or all standard time based on if they can get permission from, from the federal government, from Congress. So this isn't a done deal, but it's not necessarily going to be saying that we voted all for daylight time. We just voted for not putting our clocks forward and back twice a year, which is getting to be really silly. Are we all kind of in? I would say, I would say now that we have passed it, yeah. I will strongly lobby that we actually have year-long standard time. I agree. I would agree with that. I, I think disagree. I, why do you disagree? Because I like the evening light in the summer. I don't like the the I I like that it here at ten minutes to nine uh, in the June and July it's it's light outside I really do enjoy that yeah but the good Lord never intended it to be that way the good Lord doesn't give a rat's ass <laughs> the good, a the good Lord doesn't exist and b you yeah. see that beautiful sunset outside of your window regardless of where you're at your home your truck your car. Or your workplace. <clears throat> yeah. By the way, to see that sunset, regardless. By the way, we've been we've, we've been uh, we've been joined by our Morse code friend. Hello. Hello. Yes. What are you on a phone again? Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Are you still on vacation or still away from home? Yeah, I'm still in. Uh, I'm near Mount Jackson, Virginia, so I'm not too far from Rob. But uh, the Wi-Fi here sucks. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you two should be bunk minutes. That way you have, uh, you know, yeah. better yes, internet. Yes, Tom. <laughs> I just say we've been joined by another person who worked at the polls on on yesterday. Uh, Kevin, right? Yeah, sure did. Okay, there you go. Oh, well, oh yeah. Well, well, wait a All minute. Right. Stop her. Wait a minute. Okay, well, I'll just show you my thing here. There we go. You work the polls? No, that you just get one of these when you vote. Yeah. You also stickers. you also get one of these when you get uh, you're vaccinated and you get blood. So you know, I mean, you get. Or if you overcome your constipation, you get a sticker that says "I pooped today." 
Yeah. You know, they have a sticker in Georgia that is supposedly very nice. Oh, what is that? That's like a badge. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Bad. Oh, you have yours too. Oh, God. I want one of those. Mm. Ain't that some shit? Said the toilet paper, the asshole. You're in, you're in the club, Tom. What? I'll put it in the mail and send it to you. I got a whole bunch oh, of them. Oh, okay, good, cool. I would love to get it. You know, um, kind, of, kind of collector's items. Yeah, but you know, in Georgia, theirs is kind of nice, and kids love them, and yeah. they always want their parents to bring them back for them. Uh, and I that I didn't get in mine. That kind of is a nice civics lesson, if you want my opinion. You know. Agreed. Uh, it, it, Speaking you know, of Georgia, though, Stacey Abrams, I like what she's doing. She's not. She's digging her heels in because well, there's, there's something's rotten in that in that state there. Well, it's the guy who she lost to set the uh, the the uh, the voting quotas and so on. I think it was our mutual friend Bob Eberth who uh, we were communicating on Facebook, and he was uh, saying, uh, I think the. Uh, election results in uh, Georgia, Florida, and Texas were rigged. And I said, well, good for Stacey Abrams for doing what she's doing, but as far as the supporters who uh, donated their blood, sweat, and tears to the Beto War campaigns mm -hmm. and the Andrew Gillum campaigns, and much like Hillary Clinton in 2016, they're just rolling over and putting their ass up and being bottom boy prison bitches were my own words. Well, no, uh, no I, I, think, uh, I, I, th I think in the case of Gillum, uh, he lost by enough that he had to concede okay you know uh and um in the case of beto o'rourke uh, it was it was pretty 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 much a fait accompli it was about a three percent difference okay it's, it strikes me as somewhat uh that they're they're, they're they're that those candidates who were defeated are uh saving face so that they don't offend too many people with their sour grapes dispositions at their uh, future yeah. cocktail yeah. Uh, and, and wine parties. So, you know what? They can go fuck themselves as far as I'm concerned. Well, we're, we're in disagreement. Well, with you're a bitter human being, Ryan. <laughs> I'm a cynical realist. No, you're a bitter human being. I'm a cynical realist. No, I don't think you're a cynical realist. I think you, you have a tendency, okay, may I say this, <laughs> to be a bit too cynical. How so? In this day and age of Trump, and fake news and people like Phil. Uh, even in spite I'm of probably not cynical enough. I met people darker than me who, who are professionals. Well, take well it first of all, fake news was invented by Trump. Yes, tell them, Vernon. Coined by Trump, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, invented by Trump. Anything that he didn't like was fake news. That well, is true. Yeah. Did you hear him going? Kind of going uh, did you hear him going at CNN today? Well, that's I played a little bit of it tonight. Uh, for, oh, okay, I missed it for the audience. Yeah, it, it, was, I gotta see that. it was. It Classic was. Shit right there. Yeah, it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen a president do. Well, he, it wasn't just CNN. He went after uh, Peter and Peter uh, Alexander. Uh, well, because other people. to Peter Alexander's credit, I really got to give him props. The guy defended his fellow reporter up there. Exactly. And yeah. by the way, by the way, I, and then I'll go to we hit Jeff's uh, next. I just, this item came in. Uh, the White House says it's suspending the pass of CNN's Jim Acosta until further yeah. notice. Is that some oh, bullshit uh, or what? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and, and you should think of Jim Acosta as a hero because one of the rules is you're not supposed to, at a press conference, embarrass the president. But the question is, what exactly is embarrassing the president? If asking a legitimate news question is embarrassing the president because he can't answer it or he doesn't want to answer it or it makes him look bad, that should not be a reason to su suspend somebody's... Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, what about the PBS, uh, the PBS gal that asked oh, the yeah, Oh, yeah. yes, that part I didn't play. Where she got up and asked oh, yeah, him about it. asked him about uh, what was the question exactly? It was a race. Oh, he said about his questions. It, it was yeah. a, it, about uh, about him being racist. Yeah, what, nationalist. Well, a nationalist, really. A, nationalist. Na a nationalist, and doesn't that yeah. give uh, uh, the American Nationalist Party, which are the Nazis, a bit of a, a boost? And no. uh, and he now, said, you know, what's interesting is I heard that on the radio. Yeah. 
But then I did I didn't know she was black, and then I saw it on TV, and I went, "Holy shit, she was black!" And he starts yelling at her. You asked him that because you're racist. What? Why is she racist? Because she's yelling at the white guy. And she was black too. Yeah, and I'm going, "Holy crap!" I mean that that uh, press conference was a total. Uh, literal meltdown on his part. Yes, uh, 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 Jeff. I think this is the first time where the people who were arguing, they were arguing with the president, and he was arguing with them. He, he walked right. It was, it was a. He sets the tone. Yeah, it was a war. Yeah, it's like you're ready to punch. Well, you know what it is. The I think the press. I think I'm. I'm happy. Good. Yeah, I am too. Really happy. Well, this, I think the press has gotten <laughs> sick and tired of being called fake news. Yeah. You know, it will only take it for so long. And, until... and the fact well, that Peter Alexander then said, "I know Jim, and he is a very responsible journalist." I think it was yet another person who couldn't take it any longer. Right, and they were they were asking legitimate questions and waiting for a legitimate answer. They weren't getting it, so they were challenging on him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they were coming back with a second question. He didn't want to hear the second question. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Tough shit for him. He, he, was, turning, he was turning back. Because he was answering answered. questions with questions and yeah. then answering questions with what aboutism and, all day and, long. And by the way, this is not going to stop now because now that the press has <laughs> unleashed on him, they're going to keep unleashing on him. Oh, yeah. Situation. Hey, I got a question. They're going to do everything they can to get him to go off the rails. Yes, Brian. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna substitute for Phil Meyer by by uh, telling a dirty, dirty joke that's only funny and like diarrhea in church. And I'm gonna ask, uh, what was he, uh, Kevin? Did you notice if uh, Mr. My, our friend Mr. Meyer was in the background, of, you know, doing his prep work and his speeches and shit? Because that's exactly something like uh, Phil. Would, those are exactly the things Phil would do. I was know, thinking about him the whole time. What about isms? I, I was thinking about him the whole time. Yeah, well, he's, not, he's not here tonight, uh, and he he can't defend himself. But I would. That's okay. I, He'll listen to the, the replay. Point? I would love what's to hear what his excuse not? for that behavior is. I mean, there's no excuse for it. You know, uh, uh, he'll defend himself by doing the same thing. Jim Acosta was simply asking a question and wanting an answer. You know, and doing his job as a reporter. And by the way, so he's lost his press credentials. He's probably getting a raise over CNN for that. That's right. Exactly. 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 That's I a should... badge. That's a badge. Yeah, yeah. How's Shaka B. Sanders going to spend this, I wonder? Oh, well, he then accused Acosta of, of saying terrible things about Sarah Huckabee. Oh Christ! Well, you know, some, yeah, that's funny. Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah Huckabee is in the Huckabee. middle. Uh, she's on the firing line. In fact, she's the cannon fodder for Trump. Of course, she she's is. She's not even there, and he's trying to bring it up like he's a protector. She's out in December. I heard after December come January, she's gone. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. And that's he what I heard. Well, yeah, that's what I heard a while back, and and he wouldn't even answer that question. He probably, she probably can't wait. She, you can't. That job has got to be so. She's strange. probably doing it for the credentials to get a few notches on her fat ass belt. And, uh, yep. No, she, she yep. doesn't need any notches. I mean, her father is. Oh, yeah. yeah. I well, can only get you so far. It is uh, Huckabee. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, great. Who incidentally was one of the more amiable people I've ever interviewed. I have to say that about him. You know. Uh, Put a smile to your face and fuck your back on your back. At well, least you don't like sucking cock, he would, Alex. No, he was, if that were the yeah, case, you'd, no, you'd no, see that. No, he, it, 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 it doesn't all come down to that, Brian. Uh, <laughs> he had questions for Trump. He happened, to be, he happened to be a very amiable guy. Now, this may be the fact that he's a very political guy as well, but he's a very smart politician. And and uh, and uh, I enjoyed my conversation with him because he had a good sense of humor. I could kid him, and he didn't mind it, you know. And to me, that's always, you know, if Trump can be gotten by by flattering him, the way you can unnerve me is by laughing at my putting you down, okay? Mm -hmm. Because to me, I I respect that, you know. So whatever. You act against my interests. Hey, you're, you know the you're other guy. My adversary. You know the other guy who was absolutely amiable and that I really enjoyed having on the air was Tom Delay. The Hammer. 
Yeah, you, you would uh, you would think that these guys, you know, would be guys I would hate. But now Gingrich, on the other hand, was the biggest. He was punk. indicted though, wasn't he? Still yeah, alive? yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, Gingrich. Smile to your face and fucking you back. Ging, Gingrich, on the other hand, was one of the biggest assholes I've ever interviewed. So you oh, know, he's consistent. Yeah, he's all cons- the way around. Yeah, he's very consistent. Um, uh, Tom, did you want to say something? I thought I saw your hand up. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, oh. oh all right. That's Although I would really like be interested in hearing from Kevin how how the polls went down there. You worked in uh, San Benito County, right? Yeah, I was going to ask you the same. Yeah. Uh, we got a really crappy poll polling place, but uh, they went real well because we started with the uh, new electronic polling book. We didn't have paper. Oh, really? Well, you just yeah. switched over. You just had touch screens. Yeah, touch screens for the books. So we just search people, and if they were there, they were there. If they didn't, they tell you where to go, and it was nice. What do you mean by a book? Foster. You know the yeah, books that they, the... when you check in, yeah. you didn't yeah. have to sit there and look through the book. Oh. oh. I had a search. It was, a, it was actually a little iPad, and uh-huh. you'd search the name, first three oh. letters. Well, we don't and then have if that. you were in the right place, you just flip it over and have them sign. If you're in the wrong place, it would tell you where oh, wow. you're supposed well, to be, a... and it it would print directions and everything for you if you wanted. My my you're, my yeah, poll in Alameda County. We're in the Stone Age compared to that. Oh, oh, it's the first year, first election. Oh, New York, right. New York's in the fucking Stone Age. Yeah, I, I mean, but book. but I went and uh, it, they had my name right, uh, which they didn't do before, and uh, it went very easily. I just walked right in. They said, "Here's your ballot. Here, here's your name. Okay, here's your ballot. Go over there, and then you sit there and fill in." It was very. It was a very small battle. Yeah, that's probably why Andrew Cuomo got his third term because your uh, election stations are in the Stone Age. Yeah, well, we, also because people, he, I didn't vote for him. I didn't vote for Cuomo. I I'm voted. I it. voted for the uh, Green Nixon. Party candidate. Cynthia Nixon, right? Oh, but, no, then, like... but then when I got to um, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, Gillibrand. Uh, Gillibrand. Uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, there wasn't a alternative to her in the Green Party area. There was, of course, in the Republican, and that woman who's a Republican also was running as a reform candidate. So That's I vo- actually I voted for her. So I, and technically I voted Republican yesterday. You didn't vote because for the Green candidate? I didn't want Kirsten Gillibrand. I wouldn't vote for her if my mm-hmm. life depended on it. Oh, they her. were both running in both chances. This is both places, yeah. Yeah. That's very typical in... Uh, yeah, in California. In, in, yeah, in New York, a lot of times you'll find that the Democrat is running as a, uh, a refor- uh, what do you call it, a liberal part, the liberal yeah, part. Three things. That sounds yeah. like a conflict of interest to me. No, 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 it's not a conflict of interest. It's parties get to nominate whoever they want to nominate, and in this case, they nominated uh, both the uh, governor and the uh, lieutenant governor uh, for the Liberal Party as well. Meanwhile, the Reform Party also uh, went ahead and nominated both the Republican candidates for governor and lieutenant governor. The only problem was is that when I got to Gillibrand, there wasn't a reform, there wasn't a Green Party candidate who I could have voted for as an alternative. You're right. Those so, are poor choice of words. So I, I meant to say lazy. So I voted. I voted Republican. <laughs> that was lazy of the Green Party and lazy of the Reform Party to do that. Yeah, but, very lazy. But you know, no way I was ever going to vote for Gillibrand. On the other hand, girlfriend voted for Cuomo and Gillibrand, and I told her she was a, you know, she was just. I too, did Cuomo too. Too much in why? You know why? Because I tell you what, he's uh, he's behind the minimum wage going to fifteen. So it's all right. I'll vote for him. He seems like he's okay. The minimum wage should be twenty five. Okay, know, what, you're right, right, twenty five. You, you live in, you're I'm living in fucking work. New York. Who can live on fifteen dollars an hour? I know, but at least he's trying. This guy. I no, mean, he's not trying. He's Mario fucking Cuomo. I know Mario was a dick. I know no, that. Andrew. I just got checked. He's Andrew Cuomo. Oh huh? Andrew Cuomo. Excuse Andrew. Me. Excuse me. Andrew. Uh, you know, oh, he's picked he's out of his father's Mario, ass. the father, was good. He was okay. Uh, but a- Andrew Cuomo. That's what happened with my doctor when he asked me the question about who's the governor of New York, and I couldn't remember. All right. Uh, but I did say this. Doesn't he have that brother that works at CNN? Yeah, Chris Cuomo. Yeah, <laughs> Chris Cuomo, yes. 
They and look then, alike. And, yeah, <laughs> and then as I was watching Chris Cuomo today, I looked over at girlfriend and I said, you know, that whole family looks alike. I mean, even the father, <laughs> he, he looked like the father, you know. So. People uh, ahead. You know, what? Uh, about over a week before. That was very convenient. Oh, you could vote ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we still can't in New York. Can't in PA yeah. either. You know, what's, really? with, what's, with, it, what's with New York? Why can't we vote ahead? Why can't we mail in our ballots? Why can't, we do, it, why can't we do it on the really? line for crying out loud? Yeah, with, we, can vote, we can vote three weeks ahead. Yeah. Yeah, right. You know, why can't we? I mean, that's what, that's what uh, we had. I had, uh, let's see, we had 114 people that actually came in and voted, and yeah. we had 114 people that actually came in and dropped their vote by mail ballots. Yeah. yeah. It was a 50-50 even split. Yeah. Which which makes it much easier at the polls instead of a, Oh yeah. You know, I mean oh, yeah. I, I remember going to the polls a couple of years ago here in Harlem before they broke it up into several different places. And man, I had the the line was uh it took me an hour, two hours to vote. You know? Oh I imagine eventually we're gonna get to the point where there'll be probably two or three spots where you go vote and 90% or 80% of it will be, you know, over the phone or, Well, there's got to be, there's got to be a a good solid uh, method of doing it by, by computer. Yeah. They're working on that. I mean, that's the next year, this, this device that we were using will actually scan. So you won't even have to say your name or anything. You'll have a voter ID card with a barcode on it and you'll just come up and scan it you don't have to say your name or anything now that's and what voter id should be it'll all have the the information on it yeah but earlier tonight you brian you, ballot, you go vote earlier tonight brian you were against ids <laughs> what gives you I, changed your opinion say i was against when did i say i was against ids because you said you have to show your 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 social security card or you have to sh- you actually don't have to show a social security card in most situations driver's licenses what i was saying or a was passport. the uh, uh i was making a point in terms of how uh you know how much of an illusionary democracy we live in because what i said was try getting try not paying your property tax one year or your vehicle registration fee for one year or trying to apply for a job with out your social security card and see how far well, that the, gets the, you. The, Those the, are my exact the greatest, words. The greatest uh, example... I actually am in favor of uh, national... Uh, 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 okay. Uh, 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 the greatest problem with it being an illusionary democracy, and I give this as the biggest example, there are two parties. That's basically it. A third party doesn't have a chance. And in a real democracy, a third, a fourth, a fifth party should <laughs> all have real chances depending upon the ideas they put forward. You know, and yet uh, they never, for instance, if you're if you're a third party, if you're the Green Party, as an example, which is you know wacko party, but what the hell, it's, no, it, it is, is a party. Uh, no, it is a wacko party. Well, they've never put anybody up that ever was reasonable that made made sense. You know what? Yes, Tom. In fact, uh, you know Barbara Lee, who represents me in Congress, uh-huh. her opponent thanks to the uh, the top two primary, yeah. was a Green Party member. Yeah. So instead of running you know, against a Republican, she was running uh, against a Green person. So, so yeah, it, it's yeah, an opportunity but, for some of these other parties to really to really step up and have, and have a, a real shot at getting elected. Yeah, well, and that's, also why, that's also why I support uh, ranked choice voting, too. Yeah, I do that. I, oh, yeah. Yes, that's, Jeff. That's, that's, I once voted for Ross Perot. Remember that? Yeah. How do you feel about that in retrospect? Well, it was fun. <laughs> he struck a populist chord like this. He's been with a lot of people at the time. Yes. So I don't think yeah. he won this. Yes, Kevin. So going back to IDs, I'd ask uh, Tom, did you have a lot of people whipping out their licenses? Because we, you know, we, we're not supposed to ask for IDs, obviously. Oh. Yeah, people do that voluntarily. You know, they'll... Yeah. they'll 
and they'll show. And it's actually sort of helpful because it makes it easier to find their names. Yeah, but we're know? supposed to tell them. We we tell them put your ID back in your they, wallet. They, we they, do they, not want to see. They, that. They, how, does, how does that? What is that? How does that make sense? How do you prove where you're from? Because here and here, here, you here, you here my polling well, place, I had a lot of arguments on that saying, "Well, I, w I want you to prove it," and I go, "We can't look at your ID." That's ridiculous. At my, <laughs> at my polling perfect. place, I had to show my ID. So in you California, can't. it's against the law. Might be a California thing. So if I know your name, I can walk in if i know your name and address well there's a lot in. of other there's a lot of other questions we ask you to verify that we'll ask for your birth date and your address and things okay. like that those are okay, pretty if you know all things. that stuff yeah you could get by with it. oh it my is. god that's just ridiculous you uh, talk about see, voter you fraud like, just like a bunch of people i talked to <laughs> last night <laughs> they well, they were were but yeah, yeah i know what you yeah. mean yeah yeah Alex? yeah, yeah. Go, go yeah. ahead tom it's tom yeah, I was just going to say, actually, the, the, there are people who are required to show ID if they're first-time voters in a federal yes. election. Yes. Uh, so that's under the uh, Have, Help America Vote Act, or HAVA. But generally, basically, all you need to do is 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 just verify your name and your address and, and sign it. They just go by the signature. And this thing about voter yeah. fraud is just a bunch of nonsense. There's, there, there's it just, It's practically nothing. Uh, and... And and actually, the, the one of the big problems that that, that we have is that people uh, you know will get their vote by mail ballots and, and and they'll 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 throw them away and they'll come in and try to vote for the polls and then they get upset that we're requiring them to uh, to vote provisionally. Provisional, yeah. So well, let me you, ask you, you know, this: What happens if somebody gets a hold of your vote by mail ballot? And they well, and they decide to fill it out. Know, and actually, somebody asked me about that yesterday. I said, "Well, the, this." You know, if somebody actually did steal her ballot and tried to vote her ballot, the signatures wouldn't match. So Who's checking every signature, really? Well, they get the checked. Photo, yes, they check. They, they check. Do. I watched it last oh, night after the election. I go to headquarters, too. and check they them. actually do check them. They they've got a system there, and they post it, and they actually show it at the at the headquarters. I watched it last night, and they they display screens on the wall. And they go through the ballots, yeah. and they'll post it where everybody can sit there and watch it. And they show the the signatures and the, the like the ones that they don't know whether, you know, somebody checked it off and then changed their mind and X'd it out, and or somebody wrote in Joe Blow as a write-in. You know, they they scrutinize all these ballots. Well, I, I had to that. write I had to write my signature, uh, but above my signature was my signature was the one they had on record. And I got to tell you, with every year that passes by, my signature gets worse and worse yeah. and worse. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I did it, and I hoped that it was at least close enough to my other signature that it worked. Yes, Jeff? Well, when I came in into Boston uh, the other day uh, from out of state, uh, out of the country, uh, they want to have your passport, but they actually took a picture of yourself and their computer compared my picture and the, the picture that I had, I don't know, for two years ago or three years ago. And uh, they did that for every single person there. It was very oh, that's, that's probably the facial well, recognition stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it must be working pretty well. Let me ask you a quick question. Eventually that's going to happen with everything, probably. Let me ask you a quick question. You went out of the country. You went to Africa, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you have a pacemaker, and it reports back to your doctor constantly, right? Now, my yeah, question is, what do, you, what do you do when you go out of the country? Does it still report back to your doctor? It takes like three hours to get there. Uh, I usually kind of tell them at one time or another that I won't be around. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like reporting to a parole officer. <laughs> Come on. We know well, they don't have a long-distance plan for it or nothing? <laughs> Not as uh, effective as because I really have a system right in my bedroom that yeah. continuously makes a, a yearly, not a yearly, but a every day, a little bit of uh, informative information. So. Yeah, because my CPAP, when I take it somewhere in the U.S. or whatever, I can just plug it in and it'll dial out wherever I'm at. Well, here's, send out the message, but I guess if I think I could do it, probably. Here's, but the, I, here's the thing I'm paranoid about. Oh, every, I can't. every night I go to sleep, and there's a sleep program that I have on my iPhone that talks to the watch, and the watch talks to it. And 
I go to sleep and I put my head on the pillow and immediately it starts recording. How does it know I put my head down on the pillow? <laughs> You're going to sleep now, Alex. Yeah, yeah it's... <laughs> Wake up, Alex. Uh, what? Yeah, you know, well, pal? Wait a minute. It's a laptop. Imagine you get Phil's voice in your room, Alex. What the hell is he doing here? Yeah. <laughs> You're pissing on the side of the toilet, Alex. Yeah, no, Mickey doesn't talk <laughs> to me while Mr. I'm sleeping. <laughs> now, Alex, I, you missed the bowl. I, I can also start the thing from my watch, and it'll record it on the watch as well. That's called the manual mode. But the automatic mode, my my phone knows when I am put my head down on the pillow. They must know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, my my watch changes when it goes from one zone to another. Oh, but I don't know how they really do that. It's got to be something. Oh, to oh well, you, uh, oh, you know what? I watched that one time because I was going from a zone from uh, Idaho <laughs> to Oregon. Yeah, your iPhone. I actually too. watched it on the on the watch. Well, also it'll do it. It'll do it on your iPhone too. Your iPhone. Yeah, yeah. on the iPhone. That's what I saw. Really yeah, good. yeah. And I noticed that, like, I'll fly from New York to San Francisco, and then I'll look at my watch, and yeah. time has changed. And it changes the weather too, Alex. If you go into weather when I landed at San Francisco, it changed to the weather app too. No, like the, the, land, the weather the app. Yeah. The weather app on the iPhone. You always have. It, you have one for local weather, and that it knows. You know. And it's judging. Hey, you're in San Francisco now, you creep. You know. Yeah. We know we I'll know. tell you what's really <laughs> wild. You know? I, we, uh, I have, we have a thing. Uh, uh, find my friend. Okay. And Marjorie, <laughs> I have it hooked up to her phone. So that anywhere she is, I can see her. And anywhere I am, she can see where I am. Yeah, uh, I track my kid with it. This way I can tell who she's cheating with. <laughs> anyway. Or she can tell who yeah. I am, too. Uh, but... Uh, uh, she went to China, and I looked at the find my friend, and there she was. There was Hong Kong, right? Mm. And the hotel she was staying in. So I mean, it knows what's going on where, no matter where you are in the world. It's amazing the the amount of data, right? So now my question is: Does Apple know too much about me? Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and Not and for all this thing about security and that bullshit. <laughs> Come on. It knows where I am. I know where you are. You know. Who you are. How much money you got in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. But did you ever see it going like this? No. But you know, in spite of all of that, we still don't know about uh, Donald Trump's taxes. That's so, funny. you know. Yeah, really. Oh, but we're going to. We're going to. Y you think so, Vernon? Yes, I do. I think that the Democrats are going to request it. Uh, well, he, he, did you hear his excuse today? I love this one. Mo you people just are not sophisticated enough, basically this is what he was saying, to see my tax returns because it's so complicated you wouldn't understand it. And my hmm. answer to you, you little orangutan-looking asshole, is... <laughs> Let me be the judge of that, okay? Just give me the information and let me see if I can figure it out. I think maybe when I see that you're not worth a billion dollars, that's what you don't want me to see. Fuck nuts. Am I con conveying my point to you clearly, shitstick? I hope the fuck Christ so, dick licker. <laughs> Well, I that wouldn't would be my response. I wouldn't put it that way because he'd re Why not? He'd, re he'd revoke my press credentials. Uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll do it anyway for looking at him funny. I mean, if Jim McCoskey, here's the thing: if you're in for in for a penny, you're in for a dollar. And if you're in for, you're gonna be treated like you're in for a dollar when you only did a penny offense. You might as well get your ninety nine cents. It's worth. almost so, as though, liquor, there it, you go. It's almost in, as though in that in that press conference. Acosta was just sick of the way the press was being treated. And so he simply pursued the question. And yeah. it drove him nuts. It, so much so that Trump actually turned around and almost walked off the podium. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Get a heart attack, you fucks. And, and then once again, like he told a reporter a couple of weeks ago, he says, well, I'm the president. Oh, really? And I'm a constituent. Sure. Huh? Yeah, and did you see how he should make an hour? Did you see I'm the president and you're not. Yeah. Somebody should turn around and say, and you work for me. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. How does it feel for the first time in your life, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump, that you're an employee? And this is the people's house. Yeah. Did you see how he kind of blew off that Japanese guy, too? Oh, yeah. I can't understand you. Yeah. He basically said, you know, you're fucking me over. Fuck you. Next question. <laughs> He's crazy, yeah. <laughs> last night on <laughs> Family <laughs> Guy. <laughs> Hold on a second. Last yeah. night on fa- Sunday oh, night on, on Family Guy, <laughs> they had a thing where they had Trish Takanawa, who's their their Asian reporter, and she's doing stand up. And her joke was, "My husband said he wanted sixty nine, and I said broccoli with beef." <laughs> <laughs> Sauce on the side. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I love Chinese. Uh, you mean cream of your son, young guy? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, what we saw today was, uh, I mean, between that, uh, the, the the racism against the Japanese. Yeah, guy, that was a good one. Uh, the, the calling the black girl a woman a racist. That was, yeah, that was the case. Okay. That was the yeah, that was a good one. Really. And it, the whole thing, it was like a, a complete meltdown. He keeps getting away with it because he keeps moving past it, and, and the press can't keep up. There's no chance to get it all out to report it. So it's just they're trying to keep up with the fast-paced craziness that is the Trump uh, administration and so they don't have a chance even like they were saying tonight we're talking we should be talking about the results of what happened yesterday and we're talking about him firing Jeff Sessions instead because it's just you you wait five six, five minutes and there's something else to, to report on everybody like said that, that after you know, after, it after also the, goes you listen to him and, and it even what it made me think about with what you were saying about what Roger Stone says was don't even if it's even if it's wrong, don't give in. And what what he said about Little John? Little John was on his fucking show, and he, he said, "I don't know Little John. I don't." Know. He was on your show. Well, I don't know Little John. I never knew him. You mean uh, the so fucking guy was on The Apprentice? You mean and he, stutter- he never knew him? Stuttering John? You she mean? just doesn't pay attention. Do you mean stuttering yeah, John? I mean, stuttering John? Who, who, who uh, who's Little John? <laughs> no, Little John, the, the rapper dude. What was going on. Uh, Imagine, yeah, I he just straight he up said something. he didn't know him. I watched that freaking show, and he was right there in front of him talking to him. Oh, okay. I know, I don't know who Little John is. He's that rapper, and he was on he was on The Apprentice, and he made it almost. I, I don't know if he even won, but he got almost to the end of the damn show. By the way, you want to hear the stupidest thing of the whole election happening anywhere? <laughs> As you may, re- may remember, a couple of weeks ago, uh, my friend Dennis Hoff died of a, I guess, a heart attack. Um, uh, he and he was, of course, uh, ran brothels, and uh, he was running for the state assembly. Yeah. Guess who won? He, he did. Won. <laughs> oh. He won. Yes. Oh, but then he locked a weekend at Bernie's. That motherfucker. <laughs> not only not only would his constituency vote for a pimp, they voted for it. And not only pimp. that, but a guy who Roger Stone referred to as the Trump of Pahrump, um, uh, uh, he, he they voted for a guy who was dead. That's I don't want to say funny, but that's and now ironic. even worse by in a voting population that's very small. By a I would plurality, have a dead president than Trump. By a per- plurality of seven thousand votes, which gave him sixty-five percent of the vote. <gasps> yes, I wonder yes. the first time in American history that's happened either. Yes, Tom. Well, at least that's better than than the fact that we had two uh, Congress people under indictment that got reelected. Yeah. Uh, one was Duncan Hunter. Yeah. In- San Diego and other I forgot his name in up in uh, upstate New York uh, on the uh, western part of New York upstate Menendez and, no, no not Menendez. Menendez or whatever Menendez was found innocent not guilty no 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 this is New York a, a congressman yeah is it Nunez uh, up by um, is it so, Nunez from California but, but, yeah well Duncan Hunter is in, in uh, San Diego and he was the one with uh, 
blamed his wife for all the uh, the expenses that uh, they were charging, personal expenses that they were charging the campaign. Duncan Hunter sounds to me like a, a game, you know, a kid's game. <laughs> Duncan Hunter. Sounds like a cake mix. Duncan Hunter yeah. had a cake mix. Oh, Duncan, Duncan Hines. <laughs> Just like I said before, the late Antonin Scalia. Scalia sounds like the name of a venereal disease or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sexually transmitted disease. I got the skin. Little itch. Got an itch? Yeah. You well, got the Scalia. Get... Scalia. Yeah, get... A bad case of the Scalia. Yeah. You know, now you're almost all out of your picture, uh, oh. Brian. I move around a lot. There you go. There you go. Yes, yeah. Tom. Well, we did get rid of Rohrabacher. We we got we got rid of him. Yeah. And uh, Har well, Ruda, Harry Harley Ruda, Ruda, yeah, he's yeah. he's the uh, new congressperson for that district. Do you people North, since uh, since all of us are are to the left here? Uh, do you feel that last night's uh, last night's uh, uh, result in the Congress was enough of a plurality where we can do something? Oh, yeah. I should hope so. Definitely. Uh, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi looks like she's going to become Speaker of the House again. Yeah. Like, when you mean do something? Hmm. Well, investigations among them. Oh, okay. Well, I oh, said okay. on my Facebook profile, I thought you meant... somebody... <laughs> I thought you meant legislation well, well, or keep government working. You know what we yeah, did. What we did last night. What we did last night to a certain extent, and you could see it in his face when he came out today for that press conference. He did not look happy. Yeah. He looked defeated. He looked defeated, and yet he was said, "Oh, it was as perfect a night as it could possibly be." What we did oh, last night. What, 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 what we did last night was we shot him in the foot. You know, we slowed him down. He'll find new lows. He'll, of he'll, course. He'll find new lows, but we've we've slowed him down when it comes to making massive negative changes in this society. He's okay. going to threaten. Because, look, think about it. We well, already many, threatened. How many politicians, right, how many politicians don't have a skeleton or two in the closet? Right. So he's going he's gonna to threaten everybody. Come after me and I'll come after you. Yeah, but he he doesn't he doesn't he does he have the goods on them is the question. And by the way, you want to talk about somebody that's got a lot in his uh, in his closet, as it were. It's dear Donald Trump. Yeah, but I it mean, seems that even though he we have him in his own words, we have videotape of him, we have all kinds of things, and then the people around him are the ones who wind up going down. Somebody so said. Him. Somebody said on MSNBC <laughs> today that the biggest uh, the biggest uh, 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 witness against Donald Trump, if he gets tried for anything, will be Donald Trump, because you can go back to tapes, you can go back to tweets, you can go back to any number of things that would indict him. You know, and would would uh, would be a witness to it to what he's, he's being He's safe for. because we can't impeach him because it'll never pass the Senate. Well, I don't think that's the reason why we want it. Don't want to do it. I think we don't want to do it because we have an election to win for two years hence, and if we make him, if we start impeaching him, or, or you know, impeach him in the Congress, okay, which we can do, yeah, uh, we make him a victim to a lot of people. That's true, and we don't want to do that. We want to. We want to. You know, I, I'd like to see him chased from office. I'd like to see him do a Nixon. Okay, never happened. He has no um, humility. Yeah. yeah, he's too arrogant for that. By the way, there's another Pence we have to contend with. He just got elected to what? The Congress was it? Like? Yeah, it looks just like his brother. Yeah, yeah. Freaking. Yeah, like Pence's brother got elected in the Congress. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, Anyone here think that uh, there could be some seeds sown for a civil war in terms of uh, battle for the Speaker of the House in the, Demo in the Democratic House? Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't mind Nancy Pelosi. I've known the family over the years, and and uh, I, I don't, ha I like them as people. Uh, but I think maybe she should let somebody else do that job. You know, I think maybe it's time. Did you see her crowing on TV last night? There's no way she's stepping away. No, she's not stepping. There's not. no question she's 
she's not going to step away. Uh, but she is, uh, uh, you know, it, it, would, it would do the party well if she would back off. Because there are a lot of other people who could do that and do a fine job of it, you know. Not better. And and maybe <laughs> maybe come to the to the speaker of the house uh, job without the uh, the reputation. The, well, the baggage of the reputation she's been given by the Republicans. Not that any of it's true, but the, she's always been that evil image they have used in order to get their people elected. And politics perception is the reality. Yeah. Uh, Tom? Well, you know, what her argument is, the, the, the reason the reason why they, they dislike her so much and they're out together is because she's been effective. If they, you know, if she was ineffective, they, 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 they would just uh, ignore her. So that's... Yeah, but is she... I, is she is, potentially effective, I, I, you know, I, I think it's a good reason to keep her to be, <laughs> become Speaker of the House. Is, is she the only one, though, that has the plan? You know what I'm saying? Is she the only one who could pull it off? You know, or could somebody new, a newer voice, uh, be more effective just simply because it isn't hobbled by this perception out there? You know? And they'll just screw up the perception of the next person they put there. Yeah, I guess. The Republicans are great at that. But, I mean, I can't tell you how many, they are. How many advertising campaigns used her yeah. image as a negative, you know. So they'll just start again, that's all. You know, it's do you want, they, they didn't even use Schumer as much as they use Pelosi. Right. You know? Schumer. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Tom. Yeah, I say back in the 80s, it was Tip O'Neill, you know. Uh, it, it, they, they, you know, it, you know he, he looked like, he looked like a, like like a corrupt politician, and, and and so that's how they that's that's the image they tried to project him. But yeah, they will always find a villain, you know. No matter who it is, they'll they'll yeah. try to feel, find a way to vilify them. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Tip O'Neill for one thing, and that was my friend Abby Hoffman was living uh, in hiding up in the Thousand Islands here in uh, New York. And uh, Tip O'Neill came up, and he was like part of this group to save the river. And he was living there as Barry Freed. And he got a picture with Tip O'Neill shaking hands with him because they, everybody wanted to. He, 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 uh, the uh, uh, lieutenant governor of the state of New York also took a picture with him because everybody wanted to curry his favor since he was the guy who had headed up this whole save the river, the St. Lawrence Seaway thing. And uh, when he finally gave himself up, and among other things, he distributed these pictures of Marianne Krupsack and him with Tip O'Neill. Uh, Tip O'Neill's first reaction was, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> He's also famous for saying all politics is local. I'm very wise for saying that because I couldn't agree more. Well, it does come back to local. And, that's and I would it, say it's also personal, too. Well, Everything's that, personal. Well, that, that's what it should be. I mean, your representatives come to uh, uh, the Congress to bring back jobs and money and what have you to the local community. The same thing with the senators, to bring them back to the state. You know, that's their job. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Oh, your microphone's off. Yeah. Uh, did you ever get anything about Mitt Romney? About uh, what yeah. he had to say? Apparently, he uh, yeah, he's... bitched about uh, the president just the other day. Really? I didn't. I didn't hear that. Yeah, and I don't know what he really said. Mitt's never had nice stuff to say about Trump. Yeah, it was kind of good to see a Republican like him get elected to something. He has no use for Trump. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, he, he. We all kind of berated. Romney when he was running because he was the enemy at that point but he now briefly that, tried kissing Trump's ass but and now Trump that it, made a full lot of them they were always so gonna you're always gonna get a Republican elected in uh, in uh, uh, Utah uh, and if it's gonna be anybody I just as soon it be Mitt Romney he may uh, prove useful uh, yeah yeah I think he probably may be a very in many cases in many votes he may be a dissenting vote we did, after all, get his health care, did we not? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we did. The and problem is they have such a majority, they don't need his vote. They don't need his vote, but, you know. Uh, they need the House. 
Well, but they need they need the Senate too, and if you know if you've got a, a Mitt Romney there, at least he's maybe a little bit of a swing vote, and there may be some other guys you can. I mean, the yeah. Republican majority needs the hot Democratic House. I mean, the question the- is, how long is this party going to put up with Donald Trump? I mean, do you really want to be associated with that behavior? Would you like to place bets on it? I don't think they care. You don't think they care. I- I used to think they cared. I don't think they care anymore. Think I think it's some... become the new norm. I mean, you know, I'm, it's impossible for me to believe there aren't principled Republicans. Well, they're getting out of politics. <laughs> oh, they're switching You're over right. to the Democrats. You're right. You're right. They are getting out of politics. This, I mean, this is the Donald Trump party. These people, he's, 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 they're happy to have him campaign for them. They're happy to to drag on his coattails with the great economy. What, what and was the, a term you know, he used today when he was talking about people who didn't agree with him and how they fell by the wayside because they wouldn't? What was the term? It was almost like they wouldn't pay homage to him. They wouldn't yeah. embrace him. That was the term. They wouldn't embrace me. Oh, gosh. I mean, and, remember and that's that, why they lost. That, that disgusting... Do you remember that disgusting meeting around the table where they all had to say something nice about uh, Donald uh, Trump? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. That's exactly who he is. But he didn't like these Changed. people, and he was happy that they uh, that they lost because they didn't, his word was, embrace him yeah. or take <laughs> his embrace. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. this is like something out of The Godfather. Exactly. <laughs> like, Where's... He doesn't have a ring to kiss. Yeah. Or a cat to Just pet. a big fat ass. You want to be good, uh, you know, you got to embrace me. You know, I mean. Uh, and may your firstborn child be a masculine That child. press conference today, more than anything I have seen, was more of a, uh, a, a litmus paper to the man than anything I've seen. But see, Republicans, and, you know, I'll go back to what Patrick said last night. They they take what we're doing because it's so out of the norm. You could say what you want about what you thought of George Bush or what you thought of Mitt Romney as a candidate. But what we're doing is we're whining, but we're whining because not because of because he won, but because of who he is. There's a difference. I wanted Donald Trump to surprise me. I don't know about the rest of you, but I really wanted him to surprise me. I wanted to be able to say. Hey, you know, he's better than I thought he would be, you know? Of course. He's doing a better job than I thought he would do. You know, a lot of people get in office and uh, all of a sudden they feel this public responsibility. And it, it, it takes the better part of their nature, which is good. Uh, and I thought, let, I hope this, I was, when he got elected, I think I even said it here on the air to somebody who was crying, and I think like Renee or somebody like that who was crying about it. Well, let's wait. Maybe he'll surprise us, you know? Let's hope he does. Uh, no, well, that went out the window. Well, if he surprises, it's how Renee, awful if you're listening, you were right, you know, but, but I, I wanted him to be okay because I had no other choice. We had no other choice but to hope he'd be fine. Uh, but somebody encouraged him in his bad behavior before we could get to him. Uh, yes, Tom. Well, I think the problem is that that he is so set in his ways, and I, I don't want to make it sound just an age thing. I, I think wait, wait, that, wait a minute, hold on a second. That what is he that noise? Is, what is he that is noise? just who he is, and it and and. Any any thought that he would change was for me was quickly dashed with that with that horrible inaugural address. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just it just was a wonderful could have been a great opportunity for him to really shift and and be a president for everyone in the country. And he just didn't. He just decided he was just going to a, a appeal to that small base and. It's just a, been that a, way ever a president, since. A president, so I can't a, expect. I, I I just can't expect him to change anymore. What is what is that noise? Somebody's rubbing their microphone. Yeah, somebody. Oh, and that's uh, well, well. We'll wait and see till we hear it again. Uh, uh, the thing is that there are several important tasks that the president has as president, but one of the really important ones <laughs> is being a cheerleader. You know. That in times when times are bad, like they were a couple of weeks ago, you don't point fingers, you don't cause dissension. 
you bring the people together. You know, you give a good rallying speech saying we're we're strong and we'll stick with this. You know, part of that job is being a cheerleader. Yeah, but it's you know what? Writing, though. You know what the problem is there is that his base, and it seems to be growing, people hear that and they think old and they think tried and and worn out. And what we like is that this guy speaks his mind and he's out there and he says what he thinks instead of the bullshit that everybody else says. And that's popular. Yeah. But, you know, there's there's a, such a thing. What am, what, what, what am I exactly trying to express here? There's 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 such a thing as as having empathy, you know. <laughs> that's a big part of the job. I mean, dignity. And, uh, uh, oh, emp empathy. <laughs> that's a good one, Kevin. <laughs> and there's an old saying that I believe in explicitly: uh, if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. Well, and he can't, can't even it. fake sincerity. He can't even do that. No, he can't. He's I wonder how he, he must be really a prick to be around. I'll bet he is. Oh, I, 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 my food's cold. Can everybody get out? I you imagine. Know, anything. I, I imagine he was hell to work with. You know, he guaranteed. still is. Well, he still is, but I'm saying oh, even when, more so now. Before, before he was president, would you have wanted to work for Donald Trump? I would imagine oh, that you know away. your job was probably been. always on the line. Only if yeah. I have a shot yeah. at working on him. Yeah. He'd probably make you get his lunch, and if it wasn't back right away, you'd get well, it. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Tony's trying to say something. He speaks right. so infrequently that we oh. should give him the chance. Yes, uh, he'd probably be like, um, he'd probably make you do all these menial things. Like, he probably would be always on your back 24-7. Yeah. You have, to have, you have to think about it. He's a guy who faked his own press uh, secretary. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy who would get on the phone. Yes. And, and, and and talk about himself yeah. as another person. Yeah, he's I mean, right. he would call up people and say he was Donald Trump's press secretary, and then tell them what he wanted to say about what was wonderful about Donald Trump. He's got Come such a himself. It's disgusting. Yeah. Let me ask you something, Tony. As long as I got you, how's your mother doing? She's doing a little better. You know what it is? She she has to go for a colonoscopy. So how, old, how, old, how, how, how old is she? 77. She doesn't need a colonoscopy. That's what we said. But you know what it is? The doctor wants to have it on the fish. She sees a, he sees a little blood sometimes in her stool. And we told the mom, you don't want to, if you don't want to get it, you don't have to. Is she it, wants is it, to wait a minute. It. Is it red blood in the stool? It's little, little red off and on, but she has hemorrhoids. Wait a minute. Is it red blood in the, in the, yeah, the he's seeing? Is sometimes, then yeah. any decent doctor would know that's a fucking hemorrhoid. I told him that, and she's got piles. I yelled at this guy in the hospital. Right? Well, you didn't have to put it that way, Tony. I know. I, mean, now she's I haven't heard it. I haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't called, I haven't heard it called piles in um, years. Yeah, these are, my great my I, grandfather I, used to call it piles. Yeah, I've got piles. She's got piles. I said, "Oh my god!" I told this doctor, "You don't know what to." I, I actually when I went to school, that was not that impressive. You have piles. I've got mountains. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell Chuck you more when I visit. I was going to come over, but you know what it is, Alex? I said, "Mike, you don't have my brother. So you don't have to do this." She says, "I want to do it now again." It's all right. But anyway, oh, what happened God, was it's... your mother passed out because they were giving yeah. you the stuff to drink. That made her, you know, you know, stuff. Kevin. She thought, Ke I thought she was dead. Kevin went through it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and and you know it dehydrates you is what it does. Yeah, that's what it yeah. yeah. Well, so I said, "My old move," and I turned around. She must have tried to move off the boat. She fell right down. I had my sister's crying. This is quality MS. I picked her up. I got her on the boat, yeah. and I'm talking. No, she was out of this. Oh my god! I I'm sorry. She's, she's, seven, she's seventy-seven. When yeah, she, you know what she said to me? When's the last time she had a uh, colonoscopy? It has to be twenty years ago. Oh well, maybe maybe it's not a bad idea to get a baseline. But uh, the point is that at, uh, after seventy-five, they usually don't recommend colonoscopies for any number of reasons. Number one of which is, and this is the sad thing they tell you, is you'll probably die before you get a cancer in your colon at this point. I mean, I told them, oh, it's not cancer. She said, "How do you know? You wouldn't know." I said, "You'd be losing weight." And she's not that heavy. 
I mean, I the, the one, you know, it, it's just a point that that most I people. Felt you know, but she if she hasn't, if, if she hasn't had I'm, one in that. twenty years, then I think it might be a good idea to have one. Yeah, uh, I said, you know what, she wants to do it too. She, I said, you know what, we got to drop her off Saturday in the hospital, and they get to prep her over the weekend. And then Monday they'll do this, and then we'll get her the hell out of there Monday. Okay, so. but you know, uh, other than that, let's stop with this discussion because I don't want to hear the oh. word piles again. Oh, uh, oh Alex, I had to see the piles. It was nothing to talk about. So, oh my God! You've seen her hemorrhoids. Well, I had to pick up. I saw. I had to pick up. It was. I felt so bad for her. Wait, 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 we're losing out. Scott. Um, we're losing yeah. Scott. Stop it! I'm sorry. <laughs> that's more than you know, she says. That's, what did, what did you think? I said, Mom, what did you think of? She says, Mom, says, I don't even more than we need to know, Tony. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. it, it, Stop. I don't say everything. Oh my God. Damn it. Uh, I have a backhanded compliment I'd like to make. What's that? Let's say, I would, I conversely to all of you, would love to work on Donald Trump. Really? What do you mean, work on Donald Trump? What? what do you mean? Work on Donald Trump with the scope through a high powered rifle. Oh, oh my God. No. I thought he was going to give a call on us. Oh, well, that, that's no, really fun. We're not going there. I, uh, we're not I, going there. We're not going there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. We're not going Where's there. Where's the compliment? Right. Joining yeah. Next level. yeah. Brian, I said backhanded compliment. Brian, you could have oh. just cost me the Secret Service coming to my door. Thank you. <laughs> And I, and I don't know where even where you live, so I can tell them, go talk to Brian. You know. Um, I don't know. What made you say that, Brian? Yeah. That was a I stupid was a of contempt. Huh? Just, We're talking about piles and laughing, and then you come out with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There'd be some bowel movements there, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's the first thing that goes, isn't it? Next thing I know, yeah. Next thing I know, this police will be here, and they'll be. Well, who's this guy that said if, with the rifle on your show? Couldn't give you address if I was. going to start putting a disclaimer on before the program. Begins. Maybe, maybe, maybe for the first time in the history of the show, I can be glad there are hardly any listeners. You know, <laughs> you views expressed on this show are not necessarily of those. Of those are the host. Yeah, no. assassination attempts described on this show are not those of the host. <laughs> yeah. um, tell tell them you were kidding, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Please, Brian, for my I sake. I can't afford a rifle. T okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. There you go. That's just Brian. I'm poorer than a church mouse. Huh? Yeah. I said I'm poorer than a church mouse. Mm -hmm. And secondly... You're pretty non-violent, aren't you? You've never done anything violent to somebody. Hmm? No, not according to my record, I haven't. <laughs> oh, no. Not according... I have no record. <laughs> no, you have no record, is what you're saying. No, I but, had you go on there. But, oh, shit. But I don't, I don't think of you as a violent guy. <laughs> yeah. He's a 35-year-old man living in the basement of his parents' house. Come on. No, that's Tony. Oh, that's Tony. That's Tony. That's Tony. That's Tony. Basement got redone, so it's kind of new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to go underground, Alex, the basement spanking new. I kind of think I kind of think of Tony as a latent Norman Bates. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was proud of that one. I couldn't sleep. She tells me I don't want to hear anymore. If anybody is dangerous, dangerous. potentially dangerous in this group, I yeah, suspect, very dangerous. I suspect <laughs> it isn't Brian. It's Tony. You know. Yeah, I wouldn't even hurt anybody. All of a sudden, I'll get a call from Shecky. Did you hear what happened to Tony, what he did? He took out the entire neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, right. you know. I told everybody that's that one way to throw a block party. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to throw a block party. <laughs> no, she's alive still. <laughs> that's a good chance of talking to people. Well, so what have we learned tonight? We've learned that Donald Trump is, a, is an yeah. asshole. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, and that uh, that what he did today was just, I, I don't know, I sat there watching it and just staring in amazement at what I was seeing. And then yeah. I had to do something. I had to do an interview with Stephen Prawl. I came back, and they were showing clips of what he said to the black woman. And I oh, went, oh, good. my God. Yeah, that was crazy. Calling her a racist because he <laughs> asked him about his comment that he was a nationalist, yeah. you know. And uh, it, it just wasn't, uh, it was just.
I'd say it would be happy to lick his tears, Trump's, but then I might get sick. Yes. 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 But might he have is, a parasite rolling around in there. But he isn't capable of tears, I don't believe. Tell me. I, well, I, if, it's I, his, if it's his ass on, on fire, yeah. I guarantee he's going to shed a few tears. If Mueller comes up with something, for example, I guarantee he's going to be shedding a few tears. It will. You know, some of his family is going to wind up going to jail on that one. Good riddance. Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, you know, I think that's... You're probably right, Rob, but for the sake of fantasy, I hope they get butt-fucked. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at, look at uh, what's his name? Look at uh, the son-in-law, uh, Jared. Jared Kush. Kush. Look at him. Boy, he'd be somebody's butt boy in a second in oh prison. Oh, my God. Yeah, God, he'd become somebody's... Prison, mate. Yeah. Yeah. He'll have a swastika on his ass <laughs> in 10 minutes. On his cheek on his ass. Anyway, that's all I love for that family coming out here on the program. Thanks, Rob, for joining us tonight. Tom, always good to see you when the coast is clear. Uh, uh, Brian, thank you so much. Uh, Tom. Uh, uh, Tom. Uh, 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 Tony, thank you. You're we welcome. appreciate it. You're Scott welcome. Boddicker down there in Plano, Texas. Hey, you guys you guys got out the vote. That was pretty good. Even though uh, he didn't win, Beto didn't win, he he came damn close. And that, that's Beto bet. for president. You got it. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. And Kevin, always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure to see all you people. And if you give a big wave goodbye, uh, we'll say, uh, uh, you know, goodbye to you. Goodbye, guys. See you later, okay? All right, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Boy, that was a good show. Uh, a lot of good topics and good conversation, and there's more of that coming up. More where that came from uh, next over most of this same gabnet with the intersection with uh, Jack Bishop, and then at, one, at midnight, it'll be connection at uh, midnight. 1 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time, it'll be Connections. Tomorrow night, 9.30, Damian Chaplin in the exchange, and then I'll be back here tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.